Welcome back. The dark side of the moon is getting brighter today as China landed a spacecraft on what is known as the far side of the moon. What does it mean and how is the business of space taking off? Here to discuss is RT correspondent Caleb Malpin and Alex Mihailovich. Welcome, guys. Happy New Year to both of you. Uh, Caleb, uh, first of all, tell us about the effort uh, by the Chinese government. Uh, what did they do and why did they do it? Well, it's the Chang'e 4. It's actually named after the goddess of the moon in Chinese mythology. And it has carried out a soft landing on the far side of the moon, the first in history. Um, and at this point, uh, it's got penetrating radars and spectrometers. They've actually got a sealed biosphere with silkworm eggs and uh, seeds. They're going to be doing all kinds of research about the geological composition. This is very, very exciting. And you know, Bart, the, the media is constantly trying to tell us that China is not capable of making their own scientific breakthroughs, that all of their technological achievements were somehow stolen from the West. Well, I would look at what they just pulled off, and I would beg to differ. And let me add that, you know, in 1969, when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, that was a big deal. But at that point, the United States had already been a fully industrialized country for over 100 years. But just a few decades ago, China was dirt poor. And today, they're winning the space race. They're alleviating poverty. This has got to be a glowing moment of pride for the Communist Party. You know, I'm curious, Caleb, uh, you know, why we didn't hear about this before, uh, because it is significant. I agree with you 100 percent. But is it that maybe they were afraid that it might you know, fail and they didn't want to publicize it? What, what, what's the, what do you think? Well, the launch was public back on December 7th, but the media didn't really say much about it. And now the U.S. media is kind of surprised that this has happened. But you know what's on my mind, Bart? Uh, the phrase that's on my mind is helium-3. Uh, that's a rare isotope that is on the moon, and that could be a huge game changer when it comes to uh, fusion energy, right? I mean, this could potentially change everything. And what I don't understand is the pessimism. If you turn on American television, a lot of the commentary we're hearing, you would almost think that somehow this is a bad thing. This is a great moment for all humanity. This is like being there when Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel or the ancient Egyptians started laying the stones for the pyramids. This is a big moment for all of the human race and I, I wish we could all just be on the same team. Uh, well, I'm glad that we're making these discoveries. And, and, and Alex, uh, we have covered Elon Musk's uh, company, SpaceX, on the show many times. But uh, which are the biggest business players in the space space, as it were, today? And, and how are they doing? Well, look, private companies are looking at this, and they're definitely looking at this, what had happened with China. Uh, we know China and India are big game players now when it comes to the new space race. That's what people are calling this, a space renaissance or a new space race, actually seeing countries get more and more behind pushing uh, this technology forward. And as I mentioned, private companies are doing it as well. So you look at something like SpaceX and Elon Musk. Well, you know what? They came in out of nowhere, and they pushed the, some new guys out into the game as well as pushed the old guys into game changing. So if you look at some of the companies that are there at the top, uh, you got companies like Boeing, of course. Uh, Boeing, along with their um, with Lockheed Market, Martin, they have something called the United Launch Alliance. They've been in this game combined for about 100 years. If you put the two companies, that's a, that's a lot of thought, a lot of knowledge to go behind there. So they have to really up the game now when you have a company like uh, SpaceX coming there. So you also have uh, Sierra, Sierra Nevada Corporation. They have a vehicle, if you remember, space planes. That was something that was being talked about before. Well, it's being talked about again. Uh, this company's building these things and, and imagining a, a future where they're going to be moving uh, basically people as well as cargo from place to place. NASA has actually bought in when it comes to this company. They've chosen their multi-mission space utility vehicle as a cargo, cargo delivery system. So that's a big, big step forward for this company. Also, Airbus in Europe. Uh, you know, Airbus has been around in the game for a long, long time, building all kinds of technologies that help uh, the aerospace industry and now this year the big news from them was something called the Gaia telescope get this billion pixel camera is what this telescope's all about and it's been used for 3d map it, mapping of the milky way so this is a huge step forward so look at it all these people people are playing this game and of course let's loop back to spacex when you think about elon musk well i usually think about jeff bezos in the same breath uh, amazon's man uh, blue origin that's a company that uh, he started up uh, blue origin basically playing the same game as spacex 
this is all about uh, launching, ve having vehicles to basically uh, developing large reusable launch vehicles. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. There's so many words when you're talking about space here. And they're all pushing, again, a thousand other companies. We're looking at thousands of companies popping up around the world. In the United States alone, startups, startups are emerging in every corner. This is a boom. 2018 was a massive year for that, and it's probably just going to grow as the future progresses. Uh, very interesting about how many there are. I'm learning stuff from both of you guys. Hey, Caleb, how does the Chinese space effort compare, for example, to uh, uh, other nations, uh, the U.S., Russia, others that we, we know about? Well, I know there's, there's talk of expanding it even beyond this, and that the Chang'e actually started out as a backup in case their previous mission had failed, and now here it is uh, succeeding after the previous one had succeeded. Um, but I think it's important to remember this. This isn't just about exploration, okay? The moon has got uranium, it's got titanium, it's got rare earth elements, um, and, and there's potential here for the global economy. And basically, you know, when, when you listen to Chinese leaders talk, um, specifically the president, uh, you know, when you hear them talk, they acknowledge that we've got big problems here on, on planet Earth, right? We've got global warming, climate change, we've got the danger of new war. But the way the Chinese government sees it, uh, the answer is not to look backward and not to halt scientific progress and not to just try to freeze. The answer is to move forward. The answer is human progress and growth and expansion. And that we human beings with our creativity and our ability to think scientifically and rationally have the ability to overcome difficulties by looking into the future. There's so much pessimism in the Western world right now. There's this call to, you know, just retreat from the world and, and kind of hide and put up barriers and walls. China is seeing things in a much more long-term way and, and looking about how we as human beings, all of us from all over the planet, can come together and overcome all these difficulties and really advance as a species. Uh, that is so much great information, and I don't mean to make light of it, but we're going to, but, but silkworm eggs, helium-3, and billion pixel cameras are things we're going to be looking at in the future. Thank you so much. Alex Mihailovich, Caleb Balpin. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>